Hello my friends, today I want to show you my solution on P2 India MO. The problem is to find all the integers n for which there is a permutation sigma of the set 1 to n such that the sum of sigma i weighted by minus 2 to the power i is equal to 0. For those of you who are less familiar with the permutation, what it is essentially saying is that each number between 1 to n must appear once and only once within the sigma. If you want to think about the problem, pause the video here. The solution is coming right away. This is Vepik, don't forget to subscribe. The first thing we want to do is to test out some small number n. However, the total amount of permutations is n factorial, which increase really fast. So we need to shrink down the possible permutations before we test them out. The key lies in the equation. First, we take the entire equation modulus 2. We must have sigma 1 being an even number. So let's write it as 2 times a1. Next, we take the equation modulus 4. We get 4 divided sigma 1 minus 2 times sigma 2. Replacing sigma 1 by 2 times a1, we see that sigma 2 need to have the same parity as a1. This means we can write sigma 2 as a1 plus 2 times a2. Now let's do it again. We take modulus 8 and we place sigma 1 and sigma 2 into the equation. What we get is sigma 3 must have the same parity as a2. So sigma 3 can be written as a2 plus 2a3. So on so forth. A simple induction shows that sigma k must have the same parity as a k minus 1. In other words, sigma k can be written as a k minus 1 plus 2 times a k for any k between 1 and n. Now replacing all the sigma i in the equation, we see that a1 cancels out, a2 cancels out, and all the intermediate terms cancels out. The only term left is a n, which means a n must be 0. Now take a look on the recursion. All the sigma i has the same form, only the first and the last term is slightly different. This is indeed a complete characterization of the equation. No matter what number ai you plug in, the equation always holds. So let's turn back to the problem. What we now need to ensure is that sigma is a permutation, takes numbers between 1 and n. For now, we don't know in which order the numbers are arranged but we know that each number must appear once. This means when we take the sum of sigma i, it must be n times n plus 1 over 2. On the other hand, the sum of sigma i is 3 times the sum of a i. So a necessary condition is that 3 divides n times n plus 1, which means the residual of n modulo 3 is either 0 or 2. Let's look at the case when n is a multiple of 3. Because of these additional clarity conditions, we shrink down the space of search, which allows us to boot forth some small cases. When n is 3, we take a1 equals a2 equals 1. The corresponding sigma is 2, 3, and 1, which is a permutation. When n is 6, it's not too hard to get 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, which gives the corresponding sigma sequence as 2, 3, 5, 6, 4, 1. When n is 9, we take the sequence a as 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. And the sigma is 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, 7, 4, 1. I'm sure that you can see the patterns. So when n is 3k, we take the sequence 1, 1, 2, 2 until kk, and then from k, k minus 1, k minus 2, back to 1. And it is just a simple induction 
to show that this always works. Similarly, you can try to find out the patterns for n has residue 2 modulo 3. I will leave it as an exercise for you. In my opinion, the key of the problem is to reduce the space of search. Otherwise, you will spend a lot of time to try different things which does not turn out to be useful. Honestly, I wouldn't find out the pattern before I transform the sequence into this A sequence. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the solution. See you next time. Bye-bye.